many of the issues that you hear about Africa in terms of its future and the challenges that it's facing, uh, energy is perhaps one of the, the, the key pillars. And how is Africa going to meet the challenges um, of its not only meeting its demands, but putting into place uh, reliable generation technology to meet its demands. And a lot of the excitement um, that's going into that is to looking in the area of renewables, um, which means wind, solar, hydropower. And what is unescapable about renewables is that it's controlled by climate. It's controlled by weather. Um, and you have to provide methods. You have to provide information that not only tells you uh, the contemporary fabric of, of wind, solar, and hydropower energy resources. Where can we tap into that now? But we also need to think carefully about where we install these installations and whether or not we can rely upon them over the course of the next few decades uh, under climate change. Would one particular scenario present a, a sizable risk in terms of shifting uh, key resources? One of the technical challenges is uh, going back to the issue of models. And uh, the, the struggle that we, the, the challenge that we always face with climate modeling and impact modeling is what is the appropriate granularity of our models? How detailed do we have to really get before we can provide useful information? And so one of the critical areas that we're going to look into is the appropriateness or the appropriate resolutions that we need to, to, to run these models and also provide analyses of, again, current renewable energy resources, their intermittency, um, how this intermittent behavior um, can be predicted or not predicted, and how this may change in the future. Perhaps the most original and important piece of this work is to try to bridge a gap between highly detailed, um, very detailed process-oriented models and more efficient methods so that we can get, we can obtain and synthesize and, and provide a probabilistic or risk-based projection of, of, of all of these resources and how they may change in the future. That's probably one of the key uh, novel aspects of this research. We refer to uncertainty in the what you might call the dependent variables of, of an impact model. So say you're concerned about agriculture. Well, agriculture relies on many different variables. Most of them have to do with weather and climate, temperature, precipitation. Um, and typically, in the context of uncertainty, we refer to the uncertain inputs of that system as uncertainty. The risk is the result. You put all these uncertain variables together, and you end up with a distribution of an agricultural stress or an agricultural need for irrigation. And it's that distribution of that outcome which we refer to or we think of as this is the risk that climate change imposes on a particular system. We, as climate forecasters, modelers, we have to be very careful and I think very, very honest um, as to the capabilities that we can really provide um, to, to people who really need this information. And with the framework that we use um, by providing a, a probabilistic distribution of outcomes, what we are essentially conveying to anybody who's interested in this information, using this information, is that you cannot rely on one forecast. So you run a model and you get one answer and you say, well, that's the answer. You cannot rely on a forecast. What you can provide is guidance. Um, where is the central tendency of a large ensemble of future plausible outcomes? Where is, that, where is the central tendency of that going? Um, do you need to worry about the tails of that distribution? Do the tails become really wide where some of the less probable um, yet highly impactful uh, outcomes um, are really something that need to be paid attention to? And that's, that is really the essence of what we mean by providing guidance. One key outcome is using methods that we have used before um, is to give those that are, are interested um, guidance in the futures of hydropower resource. Um, will we see a substantial shift um, in the hydropower resources? Will they become more intermittent? Um, are, these, are these issues that need to be planned far enough in advance so that you are either prepared 
to meet those challenges or that you can adapt to them. Um, another key outcome is also looking at uh, the deployment of wind and solar. If Africa chooses to take on this challenge and really become serious about deploying wind and solar installations at a very wide scale, a very broad scale, you need to understand where those resources, resources are. Um, how do they intersect with um, lands that we wouldn't be able to use, endowed lands, or lands that are unwilling to be given up um, um, for, for these types of installations? How does that all intersect now? How, that, how may that intersect in the future? Do the wind and solar resources change in the future? Do they become more intermittent? So an area where you may th have thought right now is a, is a prime candidate for deployment may not be as attractive in the future.